Uh, so hi everyone. Today we'll try to understand uh, different types of PC implementation, that is principal component analysis, and how these PC implementations can help us in uh, resolving out a few major issues that uh, principal component analysis has. So let's get started. We'll be discussing about incremental, randomized, kernel, and sparse PC methods. So basically, uh, looking into the problems. First of all, major problem is uh, standard PCA struggles with big data. Apart from that, if you know PCA uh, can handle uh, can detect only linear relationships between variables, and hence the Egan vectors and Egan values that are calculated are dependent upon linear relationships only. Uh, if we have huge uh, number of features, and like we know that okay, out of this huge number of features, only a very less number of features would be important. Or uh, like, so is there a way we can uh, like shortlist these lesser number of features in a quicker time? Like for example, we say we have four lakh features. And out of four, like we have, we have a lump sum idea that we can have uh, just 400 meaningful features. So, is there a quicker way that we can shortlist these 400 features uh, before applying to PCA? And apart from that, uh, when we are applying PCA on a sparse data set, what we would uh, assume is that the output of PCA should also be a sparse. So, basically, by sparse, we mean that most of the values are zero and a very few values are one. But this doesn't happen because the output of PCA are gen dense representations. So these are a few problems that PCA has learned. Let's see different versions of PCA that can help us resolve these issues. Incremental PCA. So incremental PCA helps us in resolving the idea, uh, the problem that we have with big data. So if we wish to impl uh, implement PCA over big data, uh, it can be of great use because if you remember, uh, I hope that you already know about PCA. So in case of PCA, we are first calculating uh, the whole summary of the whole data set and calculating Egan values and Egan vectors. Now the data set is big. Loading the whole data set is uh, also difficult like uh, forget about uh, perform pc over that so incremental pc works on uh, our ideology of incremental learning that is training over continuous input data set something what you can uh, ca ca call as and streaming data set this can help us in two ways one is that when data set is huge you can't fit it in your uh, computer system so in that case it can be helpful and also it can help us in the idea of uh, like re uh, resolving problems due to data drift and concept drift so you can look about what are what is data drift and concept drift in my previous videos that may be helpful and now there is a function called as np dot uh, memory map mem map that helps us to generate a memory map for any data set uh, so that uh, whenever we wish to get a small segment of the data set we don't need to load the whole file we just can uh, go and fetch that particular portion of the data set using the memory map so getting my point so memory map is nothing but a mapping for a uh, small uh, small chunk of data into the memory so that whenever you wish to load certain parts you can load the certain parts without calling the whole file now incremental uh, pca is helping us to resolve uh, the problem with big data so how it is doing that so first it, what it is doing is i'm just giving an overview how it performs i'm not going into the depth of how incremental pca performs because it is out of this blog the scope is out of this blog is vlog so basically incremental pca works by uh, performing incremental learning by running multiple svd decomposition so svd decomposition is again a method for dimension reduction multiple batches of data how we are generate, uh, generating this multiple batches using the np dot memory map function that we discussed earlier so we'll be having uh, mappings for all these batch uh, of all these um, small chunks of data set in the memory and eventually we'll running svd decomposition on all these batches of data set Right, and uh, hence we won't be loading the whole data set together, but we would be calculating SVD on these decomps on each of these multiple batches. As it is out of the scope for this blog, I'm just trying to give an idea about what does incremental PCA do. Next is kernel PCA. So as I told you that uh, standard PCA is able to capture only linear relationship. In kernel PCA, what we are doing that we can uh, add a transformation to the data set by mentioning the kernel. So if you remember in SVM also we mentioned a kernel size. So similarly, in kernel PCA also we will be mentioning a particular kernel function that we can use that will can be RBF polynomial Gaussian similar to kernels that are present in the SVM model and all the steps remain same as in PCA now randomize and approximate PCA so before jumping onto this uh, this helps us in resolving the issue of that we have a huge number of features and we know that we have an uh, rough idea that only 400 or 500 features would be useful so in that case randomize or approximate PCA can be used so first of all we need to understand uh, the rank of a matrix what is the rank of a matrix so basically it is the number of linearly independent uh, rows and columns present in the matrix so first of all uh, row of a rank is equals to row of a column number one number two by independent we mean that uh, any trans any linear transformation on one of the rows should not generate another row like one two three four five six uh, seven eight nine right now if you add plus one 
to the previous uh, row you can get the second row right you can add a uh, plus 3 to each of the value in the previous row uh, you will be getting uh, the next row for example if you add plus 3 to 1 2 3 you are getting 4 5 6 which is the next row hence uh, here the second row is not dependent and not independent of the first row hence this is what we're talking about so in linear independence we means that the row column should not be able to so we can't should not be able to produce uh, the rows and columns by applying some linear transformation on other rows and columns that is the rank of a matrix which is the number of linearly independent rows and columns now low rank what is low rank approximation it is basically a minimization problem uh, where we are trying to transform a matrix of size a cross b of a certain rank r into a size of into another matrix of a cross b with rank r where r is uh, where small r is less than big r so we are making sense we are keeping the dimension same, but we are trying to reduce the rank of the matrix. Now the next, the new matrix that we have got is the optimized version of the original matrix. Noise has been removed, and uh, the small r is decided by the user. So low rank, uh, low rank approximation is nothing but we are keeping the dimension of the data set same, but we are just changing the uh, reducing the rank of the matrix, which helps in reducing noise in the data set. Now coming back to our randomized or approximate PC in that case, assume that we have phase data set uh, with image dimension of uh, 2056 and 2056 leading to a total number of features on flattening equals nearly 42 lakh features, right? Now out of this 42 lakh features after flattening, we know that only 400 or 500 features would be used. So like for example, when you consider a face of a person, uh, uh, the chick, the, ch the chin, the forehead, the eyebrows might not be that important as compared to your lips the eyes the ears etc and like as most of the image would be filled by this uh, these features only so the idea is that we have an estimate that key uh, a very less number of features are uh, useful out of the 42 lakh features that we've generated so now using approximate pc we will be uh, like we will be quickly uh, downsizing this to uh, the small uh, the 400 features and then uh, perform pc over that uh, how we will be using randomized pca so using low rank approximation idea that we have discussed earlier, like converting an A cross B matrix with a rank big R into an A cross B matrix with rank small r. So basically, uh, a rank of a matrix determines the non-zero eigenvalues of a matrix. So when we are trans uh, transforming an original data, uh, original data into a low into a low rank approximation, basically we are also trying to reduce the number total number of eigenvalues also, hence eliminating least important principal components because if you know pc is dependent on eigenvalues and eigenvectors so basically by reducing the rank we are reducing the eigenvalues and eventually we are also eliminating non-important pc components so now uh, earlier uh, if on the original data set we were we were uh, we were able to get uh, n number of eigenvalues in the new transform data set we might be getting m number of eigenvalues which where m is very less than n hence uh, while computing for pc we have uh, reduced the dimension size uh, when we will be performing PC, the dimensions, uh, the new data, the transformed data set that we get should have lower dimension. Finally, a sparse PC. Uh, so, as I told you earlier, that uh, and again, considering face recognition problem only. In this case, only in this case, uh, most of the values will be zero, as most of the uh, pixel values in the image won't be carrying any information, and only uh, features like eyes, ears, lips. Would be carrying some values so it would be a sparse matrix representation now we'll be applying pc on that it will be generating a dense uh, representation for this whole data set which we might wish to avoid so basically sparse pc aims at extracting sparse eigenvectors and it would be generating dense eigenvectors it would be extracting sparse eigenvectors uh, that would be able to represent the data set now moving uh, ahead in sparse pc is not uh, is out of this particular block and if you wish to read you can search it on the internet